Thank you for watching this video. Please click on the like and subscribe buttons so that I can continue to make more videos like this. The next bend we're going to learn how to make is called a concentric bend. Now this is most often done with a machine bender, but you can use it with a hand bender and it does come in handy many times. What we have here is a bend made with a 12 inch radius using a, a concentric bend. And what we want to do is make another bend that goes outside here that matches this and it's going to be 3 inches apart or it's going to be on a 15 inch radius. Now, let me show you something as, as we take a closer look at this compared to a regular bend. I have a 90 degree bend that we made in a stick of 3 quarter inch conduit and I'm going to lay it along this concentric bend. And you can see that when we get to the back of the bend of our normal 90 degree bend, the concentric bend spreads out much further. Because if this had also been made like this, then these would be running exactly one right inside the other. So a concentric bend spreads out and you can see it's also going to be easier to pull the wire through this conduit and this makes it a handy bend if you're doing something like fiber optics work or something like that or even if you're, got a, uh, you're going to put 490s in your run and it's, uh, it's a, a long distance in that run, it could be very helpful to use some concentric bends in there as well. Even if, even if you're not matching another radius, just go ahead and make your bend a longer bend like that and it'll be easier for you to get that wire in. Now in order to calculate the bend that's going to be coming out here on the 15 inch radius, we're going to have to use the number pi and a little bit of geometry. So let's go to our whiteboard and let's take a look at how we're going to make that calculation right now. Here we are at our whiteboard and we have our standard equation here for figuring out the circumference of a circle. It's 2 times pi times the radius is equal to the circumference. Now we know pi is 3.14 is what we're going to use. The radius we want is 15 and that equals the circumference. Okay, so I've got my calculator here. I've already done the math on the calculator and I come up with 94.2 and that equals our circumference. Okay, now we have to take it one step farther. Okay, a circumference of a circle, there's 360 degrees. Okay, we want 90 degrees of that because we're just making a 90. So this is one-fourth. So what we need to do is take this number, 94.2, divided by 4. So let's do that right now. Okay, and that gives us 23.55. Okay, now what we need to do with this number is divide it into 10 segments because on the concentric bend, we're making our bend not just one time, but we're going to spread that out over 10 separate times. So we need Basically, we move the decimal over 1 to divide this by 10. So 2.355 inches is going to be the distance between each one of our bends. Now, this 0.355 is about 3 eighths of an inch. So 2 and 3 eighths of an inch is going to be the distance between the marks that we're going to use when we do this. So from our calculations, we determined that we needed 2 and 3 eighths of an inch between marks for our bends. So I've made 10 marks on this stick of conduit 2 and 3 eighths inches apart. So now it's time to bend this conduit. I'm going to bend this using an air bend. Now here's my first mark right here on the bender. Now we have a 10 degree mark on the bender and we need a 90. Now we made 10 marks and 10 times 10 is 100 and not 90. And here's why we're doing that. This bend, these bends are so close together that the pipe tends to spring back a bit. And if you remember when we bend a 10 degree bend or any, de bend, any degree bend using the marks here, we make it parallel to this line. Well, we're going to actually take the pipe and touch it down to where that line meets the edge of the bender here. Because it's so close together and there's going to be some spring back. 
So this is why we need that one extra bend and we have to compensate for the spring back. So an another thing we're going to do is when we get halfway through this, we're going to stop and measure and we should be at about 45 degrees. And if we're not, that means that we have to put a little bit more bend in each one of our bends. And if we're getting too big, we bend it a little bit less. Here is one case when you make concentric bends with a hand bender. It's a little bit of an art and you've got to kind of get the feel for it and it does take a little practice. The nice thing is, remember we've said that EMT is forgiving. So even if you get it done and it's a little bit too uh, closed or a little bit too open, you'll be able to take it out and make the bend work. Okay, now another trick I'm going to do, which I like here, I'm going to put my first mark up to here where I can see it. And when I'm doing this, it's going to be real nice and easy for me just to see this and use this every time to keep it precise. I'm also going to roll the pipe and look, there's kind of like lines you can see down the pipe when they manufacture it. And this will help you keep it straight. Keep it right down the middle and I'll always line that line up and use this mark to line it up here. It's easier than the arrow mark which is here and of course the front of the bender I can't really see it here and I could use the saddle or the star point saddle here or the star but the, it's not as easy to see as if I do it right here. And one thing I should have mentioned earlier is that we're not going to try and match the stub length to the stub length on that uh, existing uh, conduit. We're going to make it big enough and then we're going to cut it off and make it nice and even on both ends. So with that being said, let's go ahead and bend this. So I've got my first line lined up here and I'm just going to bend it down till I touch the 10 degree line. Now I'm going to do this quite a bit faster than we've been doing a bunch of our other bends because we're a little more advanced now and we can go faster and I'm sure you understand what I'm doing right now anyway and I don't have to take as much time. Okay, that's three bends. Okay, four. Okay, now that's halfway. So what I want to do now is just quickly check and see if I'm at a 45 degree angle. And of course I've got to turn the bender over on the floor, so let me do that real quick. Okay, I'm back. And now I came up and I was a little bit over 45 on that, so that's not really a problem. I'm going to just keep going like I was doing, and then if we're a little bit big at the end, we'll straighten it out. And if we're not quite as, if we're a little open, we'll take care of that also. And again, I just want to point out to you, this is not a bend that you use very often, but it does come in handy to know, to know how to do this. Okay, that's our last bend, so let's check and see how close we are to 90 degrees. So here we are with our bend, and we're at 90 degrees. So this one happened to come out exact the first time, so I was doing some really good work today. So now let's just take this and let's compare it or actually put it next to our existing uh, conduit. So we want it to be three inches away. So I'm going to go three inches here on the spacing, three inches this way. And again, I've got to go measure inside to inside or outside to outside when I do this. And you can see here that these pipes run together. They make nice sweeps. They're evenly spaced apart, and if we had to make another one three inches farther out, the radius would be 18 inches, and we know how to calculate that. Now, one thing I failed to mention the first time, the 12-inch uh, radius would actually be on the inside corner of your pipe. 
So if this one was 12, then they, that means the inside radius here is 15, but they still work on the outside. Now that becomes a factor if you're using conduits of uh, different thicknesses. Say if, if you wanted to put a one inch or a half inch conduit in there, you'd have to factor that in. And what you would want to do is add the thickness of the conduit and work to the outsides of your bend. That would be the best way to do that. So keep that in mind. Now another way, what if you had an existing pipe and again you wanted to calculate the radius and you didn't know what it was. What you would do would be to go to where it curves and then you could tie wire a piece of conduit straight to it or, and then you could measure and get a good 90 degree mark and measure that way. So that's uh, something I failed to mention the first time as well. If you need to calculate it and you don't know what it is, that's a good way to do it. And again, in this case you can kind of eyeball it with, uh, and get away with it. Now we also mentioned too we're going to cut these off even and at this end as well we'll cut those off even to match with our couplings and we don't have to worry about making a calculation to get this exact. That becomes a pretty complicated formula. Thank you for watching this video. Please click on the like and subscribe buttons so that I can continue to make more videos like this. If you find this video helpful, please consider donating using the PayPal link below. Thank you.